The postseason is here. Life is good. Mark Feinstein in studio. Good morning on MLB.com. Your latest 13 stars who could bolster their free agent stock this postseason. If you're a free agent, the hope is that you perform and that you cash in. And my eye goes right to Edwin Diaz. Hasn't he done enough, Mark? Well, he has, and he's expected to get the biggest contract any closer's ever gotten. Aroldis uh, Chapman has the current record at $85 million over five years. People are expecting Diaz is going to get five for 100, but a few flops in the playoffs, and all of a sudden some teams may go, hmm, can he handle the big stage? Can he handle the bright lights? For closers, the postseason is it, right? We look at Mariano Rivera. As great as he was in the regular season, it's his postseason career that stood out above everything else. So if Evan Diaz can go in there in big games in October and shut the lights off, uh, that's going to only further his case to be the highest paid closer in history. You always hear how bullpens are difficult to put together through free agency because production changes year to year. Is he an outlier? Yeah, I mean, you know, he'll get a chance to show that this year, right? Yeah. I mean, he had a bad year his first year with the Mets. He's been great. Uh, since then, obviously, this year he's been unbelievable. Uh, you know, 32 out of 35 saves, 1.31 ERA, 297 ERA plus. I mean, he's been the best reliever in the game this year. Uh, the question is, if you go out there in October and you cough it up once or twice, people are going to say, okay, well, you can do it in May against the Nationals, but in October against the Padres or the Braves or the Cardinals or the Dodgers in the big stage, you need to get that done if you want to get the real big money. You mentioned the Nationals. Josh Bell used to be a National. Is this his first time in the postseason? It is. This yeah. is his first time in the postseason. And quite frankly, his uh, time with the Padres has not been all that impressive. Three home runs, uh, 587 OPS, and 52 games since being traded over to San Diego. Remember, when he was traded uh, with Juan Soto in that deal, everybody said, wow, the Padres just added two huge bats to that lineup. And and Josh Bell has not been that with the Padres. So this will be a chance as he goes to free agency to show that that time with the Padres was not the true Josh Bell, but rather he can go out there in October and, and you know, make up for the loss of Fernando Tatis Jr. in that lineup. Uh, you know, if he can have a big series and, and help the Padres get past the Mets, that would certainly go a long way in helping his free agency. I wonder if the Padres feel pressure to re-sign him with all that they've given up, we will see Tyler Anderson. He's been flawless. What else does he have to do? Well, he's been unbelievable this year, but his track record over his career this year looks like one of those that, well, is this really who he is at, uh, in his early 30s, or was this the outlier year, sort of like you mentioned? Uh, I don't know. But going out there in October with the Dodgers, chance to you know lead the best team in baseball into a World Series would certainly go a long way to help him. I think when you have a guy who has been up and down in his career and has a year like he's had this year. We're talking about you know 15 and 5, 257 ERA, made the All-Star team for the first time in his career. But he's been to the playoffs before. He's been there twice with the Rockies, had a relief appearance once. His one start in 2018, six innings, one earned run against the Brewers. So he's shown that he can do it on this stage. But going on his, on this stage with a team that's expected to win it all is a different kind of pressure. Gee. No pressure. Go to MLB.com to check it out. All studs rooting for every single one of them.